Welcome back to the show and our panel of insiders here to break uh, down all things Indiana business this week. Pleased to be joined by Beck Communications Group President Laura Beck. Also, IndiePolitics.org publisher Abdul Hakim Shabazz and KSM Consulting Development Executive Bruce Kidd. Welcome one and all to the Insiders. Oh, good to be here. And uh, some breaking news, if you will, late in the week, uh, Governor Holcomb, a lot of people saying, hey, you got to spend some of that surplus, announced plans to take a billion dollars out of the surplus and essentially rebate, refund to taxpayers, giving them about 225 bucks. Good idea. It's going to make a difference. Um, I think. I think at the end of the day, it'll make a difference in the in the short run because they'll put more money in Hoosiers' pockets. They can go put back in their in their gas tanks. Also, I think what the governor did was very responsible. They waited until they had the revenue forecast to come out to say like, how much money we we're going to have, how much money can we do this responsibly, give money back, and still meet all our commitments, just like roads and bridges mm -hmm. and infrastructure. And so, as my good friend Laura would say, cutting the gas tax is good policy, is good politics, but is bad public policy. Oh, he just likes to put words <laughs> in my mouth. Um, Abdul does. I mean, I. I I think it's definitely time to do this. People mm -hmm. have been calling for it. Um, we are hearing about folks who are really struggling with the with the gas tax and the gas issues are a global issue as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I, you know, I just think back to when Governor O'Bannon did this, and and so Governor Holcomb can't steal thanks a billion, Governor. <laughs> That's what he had, he had a little bumper sticker. So yeah. yeah, it makes sense. It really does at this point in time. It seems to me it's an indication of our fiscal. Um, position yeah. versus most states that we can even do this. Got some money to do it. Yeah, yeah. 225 bucks. How many fill-ups will that get us? Uh, get me four or five. Four or five? But I don't drive much anymore. I work at home. Okay, good, good. Um, big news this week, too, the tourism industry in Indiana. It's a $10 billion uh, industry. After a year plus of work and planning uh, a new uh, marketing uh, campaign, a slogan, if you will, in Indiana is the new uh, slogan. Uh, interesting concept. Uh, they're going to really connect with a lot of institutions, be it uh, businesses, academic institutions, communities, festivals around the state. Laura, as you look at the, first of all, the, the spots that they, uh, mm -hmm. they unveiled and also the name, the In Indiana, uh, do you like it? I, I do. I mean, I think anyone can poke fun at any slogan. I mean, right. remember Wander Indiana, right? So, I mean, that can happen. But I, I think from a large strategic standpoint, what they're doing is they're giving a really helpful resource to communities, municipalities, and others who may not have the financial resources to implement those campaigns on their own. So they're really, I think, giving a boost to them and doing it in a cohesive way is really important. Mm -hmm. what, also, what I also like is that the company that did this mm -hmm. is based here in Indiana. Yeah, um, so yep. yeah, so mm -hmm. often um, business and community leaders think they need to go outside of the state, um, and they don't. That talent is right here. Yeah, and Laura, Laura brings up a, a good point: is that the, this is free for these communities and stuff to to tag on and to put this as part of their marketing campaigns. But bigger picture, Indiana has woefully underfunded tourism marketing for years. Do you think that's going to change? Are they going to get more? more money uh, from the legislature to help fund these kinds of initiatives? Um, I think they will. And also the one thing I like about this program in particular is, unlike the you know, restart your engines, which was a few a few years ago, uh, this you can basically use anywhere for anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's universal. So whether it's like you know, in Indiana, in Fort Wayne, Evansville, uh, yeah. Richmond, mm -hmm. it, it fits. Yeah. yeah, definitely more so even than a state that works. That's not something that folks could have used in, a, in and outside of, right. I mean, really outside of economic development. The more people we bring into the state, the better. Yeah. Um, and this is a vehicle for those smaller communities. Uh, everybody knows the Indy 500, but not everybody knows Brown County mm -hmm. right. or mm -hmm. Bremen or uh, wherever else that, yeah. you know, that hasn't had the opportunity to get the word out. This helps them do that. Yeah. Speaking of smaller communities, rural communities around the state of Indiana, uh, news this week that Grace College in northern Indiana uh, beginning planning for a new agriculture center uh, in, in Bruce, I thought. Um, it's interesting because a number of schools are really beginning to implement ag programs. Huntington uh, uh, College in North, uh, Northeast Indiana, yeah. among them have had real success in, in uh, generating uh, ag graduates, a part of uh, you know, feeding that pipeline. Yeah, well, I, Laura and I were talking earlier, you know, the huge component of our economy, the ag, the ag business economy, but those are, those are family businesses. They're businesses. Yes. Um, right. And you have to train the next generation to lead those businesses rather than just work on mm -hmm. them. 
or, or in them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a great initiative to train the next leaders of all these family farms that we want to keep around. It's, it's billions of dollars of impact. Yeah, and interesting too, if you talk to Agrinovas, they will tell you the number of jobs in the ag space, the ag bioscience space, runs the gamut from mm -hmm. marketing to you name it, uh, all under the ag umbrella, so there are all kinds of careers. Yeah that are out there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think what is it? It's it contributes 32 billion dollars to our yeah. to our state's economy. Um, and the same time what I like about it is not all kids are big school kids. No offense to our large Indiana institutions. So, this is a great way for them to really dig into those careers and get really some intense one-on-one -on -one attention. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Abdul, we talk a lot about the talent pipeline across all industries, manufacturing, you name it. Can this, you know, Purdue obviously is world class in the ag space and has has been for many decades will continue to be so but can these smaller universities colleges and universities make a difference in, in I, I think so because for one reason you won't no longer, you no longer have to go to Purdue to get your ag degree if you're right. you know at Grace or at Huntington you can actually sort of stay mm -hmm. stay local which I think is a, is a major deal and also like you said it's just building that pipeline and you got to go meet people where yeah where they are, and I think this is one of those ways to do that. Yeah. Also, uh, some news, been some big economic development announcements in recent weeks. Stellantis up in Kokomo, Lilly uh, in Lebanon, Walmart announcing or confirming plans for a major distribution center uh, out uh, out east, and uh, a 1,000 jobs in McCordsville. Mm -hmm. And Laura, we were talking before we went on, that's a community, a lot of growth out yeah. there, and the new uh, economic development director uh, yeah. comes from Fishers and Speedway. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's really interesting to see how that area is popping. You know, Bruce and I were talking about he's got a lot of folks he knows even who have moved out there. That area is just primed for growth. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Tanya Galbraith, who's been there as the town manager, is mm -hmm. retired. They've got a really active, engaged council. Their new town manager is Tim Gropp, coming from Speedway. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're they're really poised, I think, uh, to move in a great direction. Yeah. Yep. I, I agree. And, and a thousand jobs is fantastic. Yeah. We got to be able to fill them, but the opportunity to the do that is really good. For, uh, Bruce, final word to you on McCordsville in terms of a planning, from a planning standpoint, you have all that growth. You have residential growth. You have Walmart with a thousand jobs, other companies. Planning for that is, is, a, is a challenge. It is a challenge, and you have to have a well thought out plan to support not only the Walmart yeah. with other suppliers and vendors, but then the residential and other beyond that. It can you can grow out of control, mm -hmm. and that's why someone like Tim would be helpful to help yeah. them plan that out thoroughly. Very good, Bruce yeah. Kidd, Laura Beck, Abdul Hakim Shabazz. Thank you, yeah. one and all. Thank you. We'll be right back after this.